Okay, so let's see how we can capture the informativeness of the occurrence of a term in a given document. So if if a rare query term appears in the document, that is more important than a stop word in the query appearing in the document. And how do we figure out whether a term in the query is rare or not? From the collection frequency. Right? The collection frequency is the number of times a given query term uh, a, a given term appears in the corpus as a whole. Okay, so the collection frequency of a term T is the number of times T appears in the corpus. So here's an example. Suppose there's a query a term called arachnocentric, which is a pretty rare term in the collection. A document that contains the word arachnocentric is much more likely to be relevant to the query than a document containing the word the. Right, so suppose the query had both the both the and arachnocentric. A match between arachnocentric and arachnocentric in a document is more important than a match between the and a the. So how do we give rare terms a higher weight? Uh, the way we do that is by incorporating collection frequency and then there was another frequency value that we were looking at that was the document frequency which is the number of documents in which a term occurs. Okay, So how rare or frequent a term is can be defined based on either of these two measures. Either you could look at the collection frequency or you could look at the document frequency. They are slightly different but in some sense both measure how common a particular term is. Frequent terms are less informative than rare terms. That's something we just saw. Now suppose there's a query term that is frequent in the collection. Okay, So terms like high, increase, line, these are also relatively common words uh, just like stop words compared to rare terms like arachnocentric. So if there's a document which contains a frequent term, that is more likely to be um, relevant than a document which does not have that frequent term. Okay, so not uh, a term not at all appearing in the document is sort of the worst case. A better case is when a, a particular query term appears in the document, but again it depends on how common that query term is. If, the, if a common query term or a frequent query term is appearing in the document, that's not as important as a rare query term appearing in the document. Okay, so when a frequent term appears in a document, we do want to give it a high uh, positive weight, but the weight should be lower than the weight for rarer terms. Okay, so rarer terms should have a higher weight. When a rare term appears in a document, that should be given a higher weight than when a less frequent term appears in the document. And uh, I, I just told you that there are two different ways to measure how frequent a term is in the collection. Let's go with the document frequency here. Okay, because this end, ends up working better than the collection frequency. I'll give you an example later to show this. So document frequency uh, is the number of documents that contain the term which was just the length of the postings list for that term in the non-positional index. And clearly the document frequency is always going to be less than or equal to the total number of documents in the corpus. But the important thing is the document frequency is an inverse measure of the informativeness of T. That is if a particular term T is informative that means it's a rare term then its document frequency is going to be low and a very frequent term that is not very informative is going to have a high document frequency. So the more informative a term is, the lower the document frequency. So we can define the inverse of the document frequency, IDF, it's just as the document frequency is abbreviated as DF, the inverse document frequency 
is abbreviated as IDF. And IDF is defined to be, uh, well, if you just hear the word IDF, you may think that it's just uh, 1 divided by the DF of T. But it's not actually just the literal inverse. It's N divided by DF of T and then log of that. Actually, by having the denominator as N instead of 1, you are ensuring that this ratio will be greater than 1, right? Because DF of document frequency is always less than or equal to the total number of documents in the collection. So just by dividing, just by adding an N to the numerator, you are, again, you know, these are uh, formulas that are not developed uh, using any kind of mathematical proofs. These are sort of intuitively developed and then they are tested out using experiments, you know, which for which scoring schemes work better. And it turns out that this particular definition of the inverse document frequency, which is log of n divided by uh, the document frequency, that works better than just taking 1 divided by df of t. Okay. And uh, I already told you that having an n here makes this greater than 1. And having this greater than 1 is useful because when you take the log, the result will be positive. And why do we take the log? Again, because, you know, if we, without the log, the value of this score will be too high. Okay, note that we want to combine this score. As I just said a few minutes ago, we want to combine this score with this score. And if this score is very small, it's 1 plus log of this. And if this score lacks a log, then it's, it's possible that when you combine both these scores, this may end up dominating the whole score. Okay? We don't want this to completely dominate this other score or overshadow this other score. We want both of these scores to be approximately uh, in the same range so that both can be given kind of the same weight. We don't want any of them to overshadow uh, the other. So we'll use log of the uh, inverse document. Well, this is the inverse document frequency, which is log of n divided by ds. Okay. And again, the base of the log is not going to matter. This is something you'll realize towards the end of this chapter. But for now, you know, just think of it as log. Not, you don't have to necessarily think of it as log base 10. So here's an example. Consider words like Calpurnia, which is a rare word. So words become more and more frequent as you go down this table. At the very bottom, you have a very frequent word called the, okay, which appears in a million documents. So actually, we are taking here a corpus of a million documents. And a stop word like the appears in all of them, whereas a rare word like Calpurnia occurs in only one of them. So what will be the value of IDF for Calpurnia? It will be log of 1 million divided by 1, which is 6. Right? It's log of 10 to the power 6 divided by 1. Here's a more frequent term which occurs 100 times. What's the IDF of this? 1 million divided by 100 is 10 to the power 4 and log of 10 to the power 4 is 4. Similarly, this is going to be 3, this is going to be 2, this is going to be 1 and a term like the which occurs in every single document is going to have an IDF score of 0 because log of a million divided by a million is 1 and log, uh, sorry, is log of 1 and that's 0. Now this makes intuitive sense, right? Because if, if a particular term in the query occurs in every single document, then that term has is, is basically useless. It's not helping us in any way to decide which document is relevant and which one is not. Okay, we want to filter, we want to differentiate between the different documents in the corpus. We want to figure out which of them is closer to the query than others. But if all of them have that word, then you know that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't give us any information. So it makes sense for it to have a score of zero. Whereas a term that occurs in only one document, 
is a very informative term and that that's indicated by a high IDF score for it. So here's a question. Does IDF have a ranking for a one term query? The answer is actually given in the slide, but you know, I want you to think about it. Let's go back to this uh, requirement. The motivation behind developing the IDF was that we want rare terms to be more informative than frequent terms. Right? So we came up with these different values for IDF. And note that this is a high weight relative to this weight. This weight is higher relative to this weight and so on. But the only way in which these weights are going to play out if there is more than one term in the query. Right? Otherwise, all you're doing is you're just adding this number. And that number will get, uh, you know, uh, incorporated into the score of that query term with every document. So it's not going to help in any way. It's only when you have two terms in the query that the IDF score is useful because one of the terms will get a higher IDF score, the other one will get a lower one. Right? If there's only a single term in the query, then, and if the, let's say the IDF score of that query term is three, then this three will um, be the same whether it's document one or document two or document three because this does this doesn't depend on 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 a thing like term frequency. Okay, that was the other component. We want we want rare terms to be given more weight than frequent terms. Assuming that there is already this kind of a score, okay, we're going to add another score to it. And this score will help us differentiate between different terms in the query. And if there is only one term, then this score is not going to help us differentiate. So there's nothing to differentiate then. Is that clear? Let's go back to that slide. Let's say there's a query like iPhone. Okay, so the IDF of iPhone has no bearing on ranking because the IDF affects the ranking of documents when there are at least two terms in the query. Right? For example, if the query is a phrase like capricious person where capricious is a rarer term, then IDF weighting is going to make occurrences of capricious count for more in the final document ranking than occurrences of person. Okay, so if there's a document which contains only the word capricious and if there's another document which contains only the word person, then the document containing only the word capricious, everything else remaining the same, assuming that the word capricious appears as many number of times in the first document as the word person appears in the other document. Let's say the term frequencies are the same in both documents. Sorry, I mean the term frequency of capricious in one document is the same as the term frequency of person in the other document. Then the IDF score of capricious will help us give higher weightage to the first document. Any questions on this? So, no sir. So. Okay. So uh, let me talk a little bit about why we used IDF instead of ICF, which would be the inverse collection frequency. Okay, assuming that we have a, an analogous formula for the collection frequency. Recall that the collection frequency was just the number of times the term occurs in the collection as a whole, okay, counting multiple occurrences in a single document. Here is what typically happens. Consider these two words, insurance and try. 
here is a typical collection frequency for them. Um, let's say in the RCV1 corpus. Insurance appears 10,440 times. Try appears almost the same number of times. If you look at the collection frequency. But if you look at the document frequency, insurance appears in only 4,000 documents, whereas try appears in 8,000 documents. So here's the question, which word is a better search term? If you look at the collection frequency, they're almost the same. So, I mean, it doesn't matter whether <clears throat> you search for insurance or try, if you were to just mm. rely on the collection frequency. But if you look at the document frequency, insurance is a rarer word than try. So insurance is a better search term. Okay, so the reason we are not using collection frequency is that you, you encounter many such scenarios like this where a word may be rarer but just because it, whenever it occurs in a document it occurs many times it ends up having the same collection frequency as a more common word okay so it turns out that document frequency is a better measure of how frequent or rare a term is than collection frequency for the purpose of ranking 